So it's almost a 4 4 1 1 now for England. As Jamal brings it forward onto that dangerous left foot, and he set up Williams, who scores, and Spain lead. It's straight at Jordan Pickford, and he gets it forward quickly. Finds Jude Bellingham. Kukurea dives in. Bellingham plays it past him. Works out towards Saka, who I think stayed on side. Foden is unmarked to the far post. He can get it across. Carver Howell's on him now. Played in instead towards the edge of the air. Shot from distance. He's in. It is Carl Carver. Four minutes of normal time to go. It's 1 1. Spain working it back through the middle again. Oifarbo with the layoff. Kukurea. Low ball in. Oifarbo slides it in. That could be the heart breaking moment. It's only England's second corner of the night. In the 90th minute, deep from Palmer, header, and in off the line, and then over the bar. We were expecting anything different. The word is about there's something evolving. Whatever may come, the world keeps revolving. They say the next. And welcome to the Just Passing Through podcast, episode 154, I think. And I'm reporting to you on a Wednesday after 
big things happening in the world last weekend. Yep, that's right. England lost. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? In the eternal quarter finalists, I said, don't get your hopes up. Don't get your hopes up. They do it every time. They do it every time. They take you right to the edge. It's like, is it rimming? Where you get yourself right to the edge, but you don't bust nuts. Rimming? I don't know. It's like music. I don't keep myself up on these sexual terms. I don't follow music. Yeah. Gareth Southgate is a rimmer. He got us there for years and years and years. England never did anything at tournaments. I will, and I've sort of got myself used to it because very early on, my biggest disappointment, I would say to this day, to this day, is Italia 90. Italia 90 was the worst feeling I've ever had at a football game. And I wasn't even there. I wasn't even in Italy. It was, the, it was my coming-of-age World Cup. Um, in Mexico in 86, I'd seen the under God. Again, that were a quarter-final. But if you take out that, that goal that Maradona scored, it would have been 1-1. But we wouldn't have beaten the Argentinians. They went on to win it eventually anyway. But 1990, it was close enough that you could get to it. And I knew a couple of people that went and had a fantastic old time there in Italy. It were a footballing nation. Italy, it's their religion, just like it is in in the UK. But we in the UK treat it like drudgery. In the 1990s, the Italian league was at the top of its game. Everybody wanted to go and play in the Italian league. You think all our best players went there. And there weren't many that went. Ian Rush went and he couldn't he couldn't hack it. He came back with his tail between his legs. I know Paul Ince went a few years later, but Paul Ince went when the Premier League were, were getting were with the Premier League. It was the number one league on the continent, which it is still today. There's not many top players that go and play there if they're getting offers from the Premier League. But yet, yeah, 1990, in Italy, we got to the semi-final, playing West Germany as it was then, because there was still a, a split country. It got to penalties, and we missed two of ours, and they scored all theirs, and they went through to play Argentina, and they eventually beat Argentina at final. I was fucking devastated devastated at that and you you'd think you were thinking right as soon as as soon as waddle skied it you thought well well right there's there's usa 94 it's usa 94 and you look forward to that four years from i remember going downstairs and there were a bar downstairs there were a bar upstairs a bar downstairs in this pub i went to the downstairs bar and i was looking out at the sea at bridlington and I thought, well, this this USA 94, four years from now. I wasn't really aware of the Euros back then because there was Sweden, Sweden 92. So I didn't even really, I wasn't aware of that competition, to be honest. And then you're thinking, right, USA 94, what can I do to get to that competition? Well, nothing really, because my country didn't even get to that competition. So that were out at window. So then you sort of realise that Italian 90 were a kind of a one-off, a one-off. And it it just nothing, nothing between then and the Croatia World Cup when we got knocked out in semi-finals in Russia. I'm fucking so disappointing. So disappointing. We had the, again, like this competition... We had the easy side of the group. We worked his way through. We got Croatia in the semi-finals. Croatia, a country, a country of what, four million? Not even a good league. They're not even in the top 
five of the best leagues in Europe and you couldn't even get past Croatia to get yourself to a World Cup final. So, fucking used to it. And then you, we kind of got the easy side of the group in in the World Cup in Qatar. And the only real team we had to overcome were France. That were the only bump in the road. And we were 2-1 down and we get a penalty. Harry Kane steps up. You thought you've seen a thousand of these penalties go in and he fucking skies it. So you're used to it. You're used to it. You know, and, and here we are. We get to the final. And how can, you ex- how can I explain England? Being an England supporter is being like a teenager who is desperate to just fuck. That's all I can explain it as. When you were in that 14, 15-year-old mode and you've got a constant hard on, everybody you're looking at who's female, you just want to rub yourself against. You know that if any woman or girl that you fancy so much as brushes your dick, you're going to blow your beans all over the place. That's where it's like being an England supporter. You get yourself, oh, it's never going to happen, it's never going to happen, it's never going to happen. And then you get, this girl shows you a bit of interest. England start progressing. And you think, well, well, maybe, maybe. No, what are you thinking about? What you think? No, no, no. Shut the fuck up. It's not going to happen. Don't get your hopes up. Now, this is the thing, being an expat living at the other side of the world. Fuck that. I'm not getting up for Serbia. They'll fuck it up. I'm not getting up for Slovenia. I'm not bothering with Denmark. Bollocks. No, I'm not bothering because it's, it's, it's the same thing every time. And then you get through, kind of scrape through, and then you've got Slovakia. I said, well, you know, last 16... Go on then, and and just barely getting through. Why have I got up for that? I'm going to be knackered all day tomorrow. So then you get you get into the last last part of it, Switzerland, Switzerland. We should be powering through Switzerland, but it goes to penalties, and you start rubbing sleep from your eyes, thinking, "Oh, she's shown me a tits. She's shown me a tits," you know. In that Slovakia game, she gave me a quick, a quick flash of the tits. Go on then, I'll go back. I'll I'll take you to pictures. I'll I'll buy you a fucking rum and coke, whatever. Just just give me something else. Give me something else, and you go back, and she's let you put your hand. England has let her put your hand down her knickers. In Switzerland game, and and you know she's got you to she's got you to penalties. And you're thinking, right, right, I'm here. I'm at the fucking office. I'm ready to just clock in. I'm ready to have my card stamped. And you beat Switzerland and you think, oh, thank God. Third date, the th- the fucking third date. And we're here. We're in final. And the first half, just forgettable. A forgettable half of football. And you're thinking, all right, all right, you've got your pants down. They're round your ankles. And then Nico Williams scores within 49 seconds at second half. And you're like, just pull your pants up. You're making a fucking fool of yourself. She's still fully dressed. You know, she's not even, she's getting you to strip off. So you pull your pants up, you get ready for off and, and, and you think, well, that's it. And then, what, four minutes from time? No, 15 minutes from time, Palmer comes on. Bellingham passes it to him and he, he just passes it into the net. And you think, this is it. She's got her bra off. She's fiddling with the knickers. You're bollocko, completely bollocko. You're ready to finally... To finally see England get over the line. You are finally there to bust your nut. 
in a chick for the first time. And they score again in the 87th minute. And you're back to square one, you think. And she's going, no, 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 don't go anywhere yet. Don't go anywhere. We can, we can rescue this date. We can rescue this date, you know. You might get some out of it. Just stay where you are. Holding pattern, please. Just get them pants off and I'll see what I can do for you. That's what, that's what this girlfriend that you call England is doing. She's saying, you know, there's, there's still a chance. There's still a chance, you know. Let's see, what can you give me? What can you give me? You're bollico. You're ready to go. You've got the condom on. She's messing around with the knickers. She's looking at you in the eye. And then a cross comes in. It gets headed. It's cleared off the line by the goalkeeper. It's headed back in again. It's cleared off the line by Olmo. And then it is put above the bar. And then she, England, is coming up with that phony excuse. Oh, you can't get it up. You're not going to be able to get it over the line. And you're saying, no, I'm not. I'm here. I'm here. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm here. Don't worry. Don't you go fucking anywhere. Don't you go anywhere. I'm here. And then she puts four minutes extra time on clock. But she's still faffing. England, she's still faffing with the knickers. You know, she's pulling them down. She's pulling them up. She's pulling them down. She's pulling them up. And, you know, Spain played a fucking, a trump card with them substitutions. A fucking trump card. Just running that time down. And they they realised that this referee were French. They knew that this French referee... You know, the French don't do fucking anything more than they have to. So they must have wasted about a minute and a half in extra time just with substitutes, with the subs just taking the time coming off the pitch because that they knew that that ref were French and as soon as that clock got to four minutes and three seconds the whistle were in his mouth and he were blowing unlike England as a as a date and again England make history as back-to-back finalists and not only losers but back-to-back losers again So what was 58 years of hurt is now going to go into its sixth decade of hurt. 60 years. 60 years. If England win, if England do anything in this next World Cup, which I have no doubt they won't, it's going to be 62 years. It's fucking ridiculous now it's getting almost if if i wasn't english it's laughable it is laughable the talent that we have now england aren't going to win the world cup in mexico canada and the usa in 2026 they're not going to win it so all the qualifiers that we have to go to all these fucking countries that have incredibly quick national anthems who are ruled by people that you've never heard of. You know, we're going to have to go to all these countries and play all these games and then we're going to get to the World Cup and there's going to be these new kits that we're all going to buy and this is it, this is that. But what you've got to do is you've got to look back to the 94 World Cup, the World Cup 30 years ago. I mean, and and look at Ireland. I mean, they did beat Italy in the opening game, but the fucking heat that they played in in that World Cup was ridiculous. Jack Charlton got banned from touchline because he was throwing water on the pitch in little plastic bags for his team to drink because they were almost dropping dead. Soldier Field, I think it was, when they were playing uh, Mexico. The Mexicans were running around like it were a fucking November in England. They're used to it. 
they had no qualms about it at all. But the 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 Irish, fucking hell. The Irish go pale blue first before they start going brown, and then they go that deep red. I remember Steve Stone and a, a, a renowned ginger. He was saying he had to go outside every day in Florida at about two o'clock and just stand out in the rain because there'd be a cloud burst every day just for his core temperature to come down. So England aren't going to be able to perform in that heat unless, and see, I'm getting my hopes up now, unless they play African players, which the right aren't going to be happy about. You know, so we're not going to win the World Cup in 2026. The Euros are going to be getting played in 2028 in England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland and Ireland. So there's five countries that it's getting played in there and the final will be in Wembley. So if they do win it in 2028, which will they really? But if they do, they're not going to win it on foreign soil. So you've got home advantage anyway. That might work in the favour, but are they going to bottle it again? Are they going to bottle it? Now, I'm speaking to you on a Wednesday. Gareth resigned yesterday. And, you know, well done, Gareth. You might be like David Brent. You know, you, you were a tactician, but you had four tournaments. You got us to two finals, a semi-final and a quarter-final. Right, you did better in four tournaments than anybody ever did from twenty uh, from nineteen sixty six to twenty sixteen when you took over. So those forty years, no, those fifty fifty years, you did better than any other manager in fifty years. You did better than them in just four years, and. The fans were calling for your head in the stadiums in Germany. The press were calling for your head for being boring and not taking the handbrake off. But you got us to two finals, a semi-final and a quarter-final in two World Cups and two Euros. And although you didn't even get us off at line, it do not matter. Those stats stand up and you've gone. You've gone. I don't know who they're going to bring in. If you look towards the the English managers, it would have to either be Graham Potter or Eddie Howe. Lee Carsley's in charge at under twenty ones. I can't see him bringing him in. And who's who's available? Will Klopp do it? Is Klopp going to come and take that job? Would we would we accept a German trying to win it for us? I don't know. I don't think. Pep would take that job on because he's, he's going to probably have his last season with Man City this season. So I'd, I have no idea. I have no idea. I mean, Capello was a fucking disaster. Sam Allardyce is not going to come back. Who knows? Who knows? So that's that and that's that. I mean, could you get we could have had better shots, better shots than Matthew Crooks, perhaps. I have no idea. So I'm not like like a parent speaking to a child. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. And then that child looking back in the parent's face and, and saying, oh, but you're not mad, you're just disappointed. I can live with that. I can live with disappointment. I'm not going to get mad. Because what do you expect? What do you expect? It's like having, if you've had the pleasure of having a really hot girlfriend who's way above your pay grade, she's going to cheat on you eventually. She's going to she's gonna suck your dick. She's going to fuck you. But she's always, always got her eye on the door. And you're always going to be left on your bedroom floor wondering... Where did it all go wrong? But I were expecting it. And that's what this tournament did for me. But I warned myself. These last few podcasts were a warning to myself. And they were a warning that I didn't heed. And the whole country didn't heed. 
because here we are with his pants round his ankles having not shot his bolt while the girl is gone that's that and I'll do it all again in two years so until then well not until then I'll see you next week but until then Bradford City are going to start playing their first game the first second week in August so I'll be getting my hopes up for that who knows where we're going to be May next year at least there's going to be no football to ruin the summer next year hooray I'll see you when I see you and I will say adios.